What is so important about HTTPS that these days most websites require it? How does HTTPS work? We'll answer these questions in this video. Let's dive right in. Without HTTPS, the communication between the browser and the server is in plain text. This means that the password you enter or the credit card number you send over the internet can be read by anyone who has the ability to intercept it. HTTPS is designed to solve this problem to make the data sent over the internet unreadable by anyone other than the sender and the receiver. HTTPS is an extension of the HTTP protocol. We discussed HTTP in an earlier video. Check the description if you would like to learn more about it. With HTTPS, data is sent in an encrypted form using something called TLS. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. If the encrypted data gets intercepted by a hacker, all they could see is jumbled data. Let's take a look at how the TLS handshake works. There are several steps. Step 1. Just like in the case for HTTP, the browser establishes a TCP connection with the server. Step 2. This is where the TLS handshake begins. The browser sends a client hello to the server. In this hello message, the browser tells the server the following things. 1. What TLS version it can support. It could be TLS 1.2, TLS 1.3, etc. 2. What cipher suite it supports. A cipher suite is a set of encryption algorithms to use to encrypt data. After receiving the client hello, the server gets to choose the cipher suite and the TLS version to use based on the options it got from the client. It sends those in a server hello message back to the client. The server then sends the certificate to the client. The certificate includes a lot of different things. One of the key things is the public key for the server. The client uses the public key in something called asymmetric encryption. In asymmetric encryption, a piece of data that is encrypted by a public key can only be decrypted by the private key. We'll discuss how this is used in a bit. This concludes step two, the hello phase of the TLS handshake. At this point, the client has a server certificate and the client and server have agreed on the TLS version and the cyber suite to use. Now to step three. This is the step where the client and the server come up with a shared encryption key to use to encrypt data. And this is where the asymmetric encryption come into the picture. Again, with asymmetric encryption, the data encrypted on the client side using the public key from the server can only be decrypted by the server. This is how the client sends an encryption key safely to the server over the wide open internet. All this is done in the client key exchange message. The exact detail varies depending on the cyber suite used. Here we use RSA as an example, since it is the easiest to understand. With RSA, the client generates an encryption key, also called a session key, and encrypts it with the server public key, and sends the encrypted session key to the server over the internet. The server receives the encrypted session key and decrypts it with its private key. Now both sides hold the session key. And this is where they enter step 4 of the TLS handshake, where they use the session key and the agree upon cipher suite to send encrypted data back and forth in a secure bidirectional channel. Now you may ask, why don't we just use asymmetric encryption for everything? Why switch to symmetric encryption at all? The main reason is that asymmetric encryption is computationally expensive. It is not really suitable for bulk data transmission. Before we close, there are two final points I would like to discuss. First, the handshake we talked about applied to TLS 1.2, while the latest version is TLS 1.3, and TLS 1.3 is supported on all major browsers. As we can see in our illustration, TLS 1.2 takes two network round trips to complete, this is one of the major improvements of TLS 1.3. It optimizes the handshake to reduce the number of network round trips to one. We decided to talk about TLS 1.2 because we view TLS 1.3 as an optimization. As with most optimizations, it is a bit harder to explain. That's why we chose TLS 1.2 instead. The core concepts in TLS 1.2 still applies to TLS 1.3. The second final point we'd like to discuss is that 
In the explanation above, we use RSA for asymmetric encryption to securely exchange the asymmetric session key. Again, we chose the RSA because it is easy to understand. However, asymmetric encryption is not the only way to share the session key between the client and the server. In fact, in TLS 1.3, RSA is no longer supported as the, a method for key exchange. Diffie-Hellman is a more common way nowadays for exchanging session keys. Diffie-Hellman is complicated, but in a nutshell, it uses some advanced math involving large prime numbers to derive a shared session key without ever transmitting a public key over the network. This is it for HTTPS. If you would like to learn more about system design, check out our books and free weekly newsletter. Please subscribe if you learn something new. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.